นโมทัสสะบกวะโทอรหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะบกวะโทอรหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะบกวะโทอรหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะทิรวาระพุทธิสมซีรีส์ดัมมัตักนับเบอร์ฟิฟตี้ an explanation of the right view สมาธิทิตัวไม้ขวาของศิษย์ Of the Buddha, Sariputta explained samadhi, the right understanding, or the right view. Taught by the Buddha in. Sixteen different ways do the bhikkhus. We will discuss here one of the sixteen approaches. Once the Buddha Sariputta. And some bhikkhus resided at the Jata Grove in Savati. Buddha quite often praised Sariputta for his great wisdom. One of Sariputta. Duties that he set upon himself was to explain the Dharma Buddha delivered to the bhikkhus, so that they could easily understand from different points of view. From different angle, Sariputta stated that every religion, different philosophy, and different systems uses the word right. Understanding or right view, based on their interpretation. So, how do we measure a person's right understanding or right view? How do we measure whether one has the samadhi? So, let's take out the word, pick up the word sama first. What is sama? Because in Pali, what is samadhi? So, what is sama? Sama means right or correct in the English language. However, it is more than that. It includes being straightforward. 
balanced, graceful, beautiful, and praiseworthy. It is not just simply right. It also includes the qualities In that view or understanding, qualities such as straightforward, balanced, graceful, beautiful, and praiseworthy. Such kind of understanding comes from the direct investigation and verification by oneself. One requires knowledge. In theory, as well as practical experience, to possess is this right view or understanding. In the Buddha time, the monks learned by listening. One needs to listen very carefully and attentively because there is no replay, videotape or audio tape. You listen once, but do know one need to listen very carefully and attentively. And after that discussion with the fellow monks, follow to understand thoroughly. All get together and discuss and talk about it. <coughs> discuss so that they have a deeper understanding. One might get, one another might miss. Sutta discourse, okay. the Buddha's teaching, the Sutta. In a Sutta, always started with a phrase called, Thus I have heard, by Arhant Ananda at the first Buddhist council which was taken place three months after the Buddha's passing. This phrase, this I have heard, this phrase, does not represent only the listening and hearing aspects. It's not just simply listening, and hearing aspects, but memorizing, intellectual understanding, backed by practical experience. So whenever you hear a phrase, thus I've heard, knows that it involves listening very carefully and attentively, and also memorizing it and intellectual analytical understanding all backed by the practical experience. Shin Ananda who is the answer or reciter at the first Buddhist council. He was an arahant and also he has the great photographic memory and he listened, discussed with others and even 
Buddha may correct a few things if he misunderstood his sutta. And as he is an arahant, he has accomplished the job of a bhikkhu. So he thoroughly understands the Dharma from the experience. And that whole package is represented in the phrase, This I have heard. So don't take that phrase lightly. Now, let's go back to the samadhi, the right view or the right understanding. Sariputta explained the right understanding as follows. This is one of the angle he was explaining. Under this context, knowing what is wholesome, wholesome, kusala in Pali, kusala, wholesome. Knowing what is unwholesome, akusala, opposite to wholesome is unwholesome. Knowing what is unwholesome, akusala, is the right understanding, the first statement. Knowing the origin or roots of unwholesome is right understanding. Knowing what is wholesome, kusala, is the right understanding. Knowing the origin or roots of wholesome is the right understanding. That's how he coined it, Sariputta coined it, based on the right understanding or the right view, Samadhiti. So we know what Samar is, Deity is view or you may say understanding. So, the key here is wholesome and unwholesome and their origins or the roots. So, unwholesome, do you really know what it is? Killing is unwholesome. Yeah, we just say killing one word, take a machete and chop it off, so to speak. But in a Dharma way, to understand it, to know it, let's see what kind of things are involved in this killing. Killing must be killing a being. It may be a human, it may be animals, birds, insects. So, must kill a being. In Pali it's called Satawa. And also, when you are killing it, you must know it is a being. Sometime, let's say, because you step on an ant, the ant dies, it's killing. 
But while you are stepping, you don't even know you are stepping on a ant. But if you know it is an ant and if you step on it, that's a killing. If you don't know, that doesn't constitute killing, even though the ant died. So that's number two. And number three is having desire to kill. Okay? Having desire to kill. Killing accidentally is you have no desire that person to be dead or that animal to die. Having a desire to kill. And then applying effort to make a kill. You have to apply a full effort to kill. And then that being, that living being, let's say that animal is dead because of the act of killing. Sometime you might kill it, the first four are there, but the animal might be still alive. Then you haven't completed the act of killing. Akusala karma, unwholesome action. Akusala karma, unwholesome action. Arises only if the volition is strong enough to complete these five parts of an act. When you completed the five parts on, of an act, that means there's a full volition there. And at that point, one can say, there's the akusala kama arises. Unwholesome action. Akusala kama arises. So, we are making a point on the act of killing or killing. So, we are talking about what is akusala, unwholesome. Stealing, robbing, blackmailing, extortion, arm twisting, or for that matter, any act of taking from a from an unwilling subject is unwholesome. Sexual misconduct is unwholesome. Okay, those are the three physical acts. Killing, taking what is not willingly given, and sexual misconduct. Three of the five precepts. They are unwholesome, akusala. And the fourth precept is called musawada. But in here, that False speech is split into four different categories or different state. Lying is unwholesome. Slander, unwholesome. Speaking rude and harsh words, unwholesome. And engaging in frivolous talks is unwholesome. So there are five kinds of speech. 
are considered unwholesome. And for this akusala karma, unwholesome action arising or to arise requires strong volition to complete every actions that we just described. Three physical actions and four verbal actions for them to become akusala karma unwholesome actions you need a strong enough volition to complete it in entirety and here one part is in the speech is frivolous talk I like to expand a little bit on it from a different angle monks observe noble silence when they are not engaging with Dhamma related activities when they are not learning Dharma, teaching Dharma, doing Dharma works. If they are not engaging with that, let's say their spare time, they engage in noble silence. Why? To refrain from frivolous talks talks that doesn't really produce any benefit to anyone just the self satisfaction to show off one's disgruntled nature or to show off how smart one is that's the purpose of the noble silence not only that these frivolous talk are time consuming and produce unbeneficial result and also leaves one in a state of ignorance at that time ignorance awija not Ignorance about politics and economics. Ignorance about the true nature of mind and matter. Awija. Yogis also observed noble silence in retreat. To avoid engaging in frivolous talks. That's a purpose. Not only that they keep silent in those moments, in those periods, they are contemplating Dharma silently. It is not thinking a million things under the sun. Your mind is very focus on the nature of Dharma whether mind or whether matter or whether it's a sutta or whether it is Vinaya rules and regulations the mind is bent on it dwell in it that's a noble silence that's how I would like to explain frivolous talks. Okay, we have talked about physical deed and verbal speech. Let's go to the silent mental state. If one is not engaging 
the not related thoughts. The mind will go to crazy places. Thoughts of desire to get or possess things that do not belong to oneself are unwholesome. See, if you are not in the line of Dharma, your thoughts will be in there. Wanting something that belongs to others, but only at the thought level, it never arises to the speech or deed. But still, for a practitioner, it is unwholesome. Even non-practitioner, they don't know it is unwholesome, but it is unwholesome. It is akusala. Thoughts of wanting to hurt and harm others is unwholesome. The minds go into that. Do anger, aversion, hatred, revenge. If the mind is not on Dharma, that's where the mind goes. That is also unwholesome. Only on the mental level, it never arises to deed or speech. Also, having doubts. And the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, the three jewels, and the law of karma, it's also unwholesome. Why not believing in three jewels and not believing in law of karma? What are they? They are actually Dharma. And if your mind is not bent on Dharma. If you don't believe in Dharma, you won't be bent on Dharma and your mind will be in Loba and Dosa. Greed and anger. That's why not believing, having doubt. It is not that you must believe in the Buddha. We just say Buddha because he is the one who taught us how to live correctly without hurting, harming, helping, safeguarding. That's why we identify the Buddha. But it is his teachings, the Dharma. So there are three unwholesome mental actions. They are unwholesome. So altogether, ten. Three physical, four verbal, and three mental. Now we know what unwholesome akusala is. Knowing intellect in theory, of course, whether you live accordingly or not is up to you. And what is the origin or the roots of unwholesome? Because Sariputta said, we must know the origin. The origin of the root of unwholesome karma or akusala karma is kilesa, mental defilements. We all know what kilesa is. Loba, dosa, and moha. Greed, aversion, and delusion. That is the root of, the origin of, unwholesome, akusala. Now, what is wholesome? Mm. 
for the practical purpose, unwholesome is the desire. Sorry, wholesome is the desire to refrain from the ten unwholesome actions. We have discussed ten unwholesome actions or karma. Refraining oneself from those is wholesome, kusala. If you want a practical, operational, that's a definition. The origin or the root of wholesome, kusala, is aloba, non-greed and generosity, adosa, non-anger and loving-kindness, and amoha, non-delusion and wisdom. Those are the roots of kusala, wholesome. Here we have the one of the root is amoha. Amoha have another name. That name is called binya. Binya is wisdom. And this Pinya or Amoha is the understanding of the full noble truth. In short, that's what it is. Understanding of the full noble truth is wisdom, Pinya or Amoha. Now we know their origins and we know what is Akusala and Kusala, unwholesome and wholesome. Let's see how these Akusala and Kusala is connected to the Four Noble Truth. Knowing Akusala, unwholesome, is the understanding of the noble truth of suffering. Akusala is suffering. All the unwholesome actions are suffering. They produce suffering. So, if you know Akusala, unwholesome, you are experiencing or understanding the first noble truth, Dukkha Shisha. And if one knows the three roots of evil, what are the three roots of evil? Loba, Dosa and Moha, greed, anger and delusion. If one knows the three roots of evil, then the origin of suffering is the understanding of the noble truth of the cause of suffering. Because Loba and Dosa and Moha cause Akusala, the suffering, so it is the cause. And what is the second noble truth? The noble truth of the cause of suffering. That is how one knows the first noble truth and second noble truth. By knowing what Akusala is and by uprooting the cause of that suffering or Akusala. If one knows the three good roots, what are the three good roots? Aloba, Adosa, and Amoha. Okay. 
or in English, generosity or dana is aloba. Morality or sila precept is adosa. And mental development or bhavana is amoha in English. Generosity, morality, or you can say loving kindness, and mental development. Bhavana are the three roots, three good roots. And the understanding of these three good roots and living with the three good roots is the noble truth of the Eightfold Path. The complete abandonment of Akusala unwholesome and the full development of kusala wholesome with wisdom with wisdom is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering the full noble truth so Kusala, wholesome, akusala, unwholesome, and they are cause or roots or origin. In a way, is the four noble truth. Of course, we all know one has to become a one non-returner. Anagami. And if you become a non returner, you abandon loba and dosa completely, greed and anger completely. And arahant, entirely uprooted delusion, conceit, and clinging to existence. Only then. Every traces of mental defilements disappear. An individual who knows what is unwholesome and uprooted the cause and also who knows what is wholesome and develop the cause are the one with or possesses the right view or the right understanding. These individuals are graceful, they are beautiful. They are praiseworthy. And balance with the right view or the right understanding. And they are free from craving and ignorance, tanna and avijja. And they live freely, totally liberated in this world. May all of you be able to practice, understand and develop abandon akusala, develop kusala.
and attain liberation as soon as possible. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you very much.